any clinician who's treated allergic dogs with immunotherapy is familiar with some of the pros and cons of injectable immunotherapy. My own dog was on injectable immunotherapy for several years, and the injections worked, but he hated his shot. My wife hated holding him, and I hated giving them. Sublingual immunotherapy is an option that avoids the needles, and for many owners and many allergic dogs, that's a welcome change. But even beyond the, the decreased pain and the ease of administering sublingual immunotherapy, the reason that it's really a breakthrough option and an exciting option at that is because of the fact that for some patients who have even failed injectable immunotherapy, we have seen a positive response to sublingual immunotherapy. Another nice feature of sublingual immunotherapy is the fact that the response can be faster. Whereas some dogs need several months to respond to the injectable schedules or the injectable regimen, some patients on oral or sublingual formulations can improve within 30 days or less. I have had patients improve from their sublingual drops within the first one and two weeks. Another option or another nice feature of sublingual immunotherapy is the safety. Patients who have had an adverse reaction to injectable immunotherapy will usually tolerate the sublingual form much better. Even patients who have had anaphylaxis reactions to injectable immunotherapy have done just fine when we switched over to sublingual. In some of the review of human literature, there's, there are statistics that show one fatality for every 6.4 million injections in humans from their immunotherapy injections. There has never been a fatality to sublingual, um, according to the last review that I read. So safety is a nice additional feature of sublingual immunotherapy. But the limitations of sublingual immunotherapy remain the same limitations and challenges that we face with injectable immunotherapy. First and foremost is the challenge of really correlating test results with the patient and the patient's seasonality and the patient's exposure patterns. We'll see crazy things in, pa in allergens if a clinician is really not supervising that process. It makes no sense to have a patient who is itchy year-round, yet we only find a couple of tree pollens in their extract. So correlating those test results with the patient's pattern is of the utmost importance.